Hello YouTube, it's been a while as always, um, as you probably guess it by the title of the video we're doing 4 XV conversion today, um, or tonight should I say, it's like gone 4 o'clock in the morning, um, I can't be bothered to show you, you're just going to have to take my word for it, you'll probably notice by the fact of how tired I am, I'm only doing a bit of a strip down tonight, um, then I'm going to get some rest and carry on, but I was just so adamant I was going to do it tonight, and me being me, I've, I've just got to do something, so, um, I'm going to run you through quickly, get you up to date with the bike and where we've been at because there's been a few things that I've done that I haven't filmed and um, it's been for its MOT. Um, failed on the rear bottom um, uh, link, one of the bushes in there, uh, cost me 50 odd quid from Yamaha um, to uh, get the part and while I was replacing it I had a little topple and it fell over. Um, mainly because of not really proper equipment to be able to take the weight off the bike off the back end and it, it, we fell over broken mirror so we've now got some aftermarket 5SL mirrors on there which don't actually fold so I'm going to be replacing them yet again but they were cheap um, bought after I'd already spent an outrageous amount of money that month on the bike um, since I got it back from being stolen three months ago <laughs> it has cost me quite a bit of money, uh, bounty money, um, bits and pieces, you know, new lock set, what have you. Um, last month was MOT, I only failed on that link bar, but it had quite a lot of worn out parts. Um, change pocket, clutch, um, needed an oil change. Um, <clears throat> now I've got black plastic covers, removable covers on my headlights. So they tinted black and I had to remove them for the MOT um, which was complete ball ache. My headlights are a bit cloudy at the moment but I have a Valis friend that trusts me that he can bring them up to brand new so uh, I'm going to let him do that. Um, I'm now not commuting on it because uh, I live a two minute walk away from work so it gets a lot less mileage but the odd week or so that I take it out, or sorry, the odd day or so that I take it out each week, um, it's just mainly for a bit of fun now, which is nice, um, but last time I took it out I noticed we've got a leak in the fork seal, and I'm, I've always intended on doing an R1 fork conversion, um, I want this bike looking as beautiful as possible for May Day um, this coming year. So that leaves me from now, sort of five months. Um, so there's no point in spending any money on these forks getting repaired. I might as well just put that money and some extra into buying the fork conversion, which is what I've done, which I'll show you now. Um, this is what I've got. Uh, from the full kit off eBay, I was lucky enough to find someone selling literally a whole front end. So we've got everything we need. We've got bearings, we've got clip-ons, we've got axles, we've got yokes we've got forks importantly we've got mud guard we've got some nice ebc brakes that are pretty much brand new so they're going to look nice we've got new pads in the calipers now i know the calipers are apparently the same as mine but whatever it will come together so you know why not um got a wheel as well uh, with a decent tire the wheel was black i was spent the past day or whatever painting it putting some fancy rim tape on it just experimenting I'm undecided at the moment. I'll wait to see once it's all together and on the bike. Um, I have got the rim tape for the other wheel, for the rear wheel, because I have actually just got a solid red rim tape on it at the moment, um, which is lacquered on, so I don't know actually how that is going to behave coming off. Hopefully, okay. Um, like I say, we've got the headlight covers because I, I I am a tart I like things to look nice and to be honest I think with the red and white and black the black headlights really go with it so got some headlight covers they just pop on with some weird um, velcro sort of stuff replacing that wheel because we've got a ding in it uh, courtesy of the thieves thank you very much tires 
nearly had it as well. The real one has as well, but I'll do that next month. You know, yeah, again, the bike has cost me a fortune. Last month we did the chain sprocket, two up in the rear, one down in the front, 520 chain conversion, load of red fancy bolts. Yes, I like my bling, a lot of bling or fancy bits, whatever. Um, I see on the internet so many people disapprove and don't like you know anodized bolts and this that and the other but I can't give a shit to be honest I quite like it I, you know it makes the bike mine it makes this generic R6 mine um, so say what you fucking like I don't care um, you know most of the, I try and get as high quality stuff as possible you know the fairing bolts are just cheap eBay ones but like you know, all the ones holding the, the brakes on, the, you know, the brake mask cylinder and the top nut and all that. It's all pro, pro bolt stuff. It's all professional aircraft aluminium stuff. You know, you can get a decent torque down on it like a normal bolt. You know, it's just aluminium. Like, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Uh, maybe sprocket bolts, they're from pro bolt as well. And they're actually your proper sprocket nuts. They're helicoid steel inside. We've got your lock wire holes, which I don't bother using for road bikes, so you know, there's no need for that. Um, what can I say? Um, other than bodywork, now really, after the fork conversion, um, that's all it really needs just tidying up bodywork wise. Um, that's it. May appear to be rambling on, so. I shall get on with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to film this and then I'm going to decide later on whether to actually edit it as best I can and try and put it in or not. I just don't know at the moment. Novice. So, should be fun either way. Strip down tonight, rebuild tomorrow after a bit of rest. So, let's get on with it. See you in a bit. Hi guys, it's uh, a new day. Um, Last night, as you can see, I pretty much stripped down everything uh, needed. Basically, it got, I only, it took me just over an hour or so, but I got so tired in the end. It was, you know, gone five o'clock in the morning, and um, so I've got some rest, and we're all sort of fairly fresh right now. So, um, we're going to be carrying on. Um, I've got to remove the uh, steering tubes and swap them over which I'll show you I've also got to do a bit of a clear up as well because it's a bit of a mess around here um, at the moment as you can see but what we basically got to do is remove that and put it in press it into this bottom yoke now I've been told I need a press for this and I took this to work and pressed out the R1 tube right here um, but it went so easy, didn't even need a press. Um, so I'm fairly confident that it's going to be fairly all right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you now. Um, and then we're going to have a little bit of a tidy up. And in the second view, we'll be uh, ready for um, swapping over the head tube. And carrying on with putting it back together and start to make it look like a bike again. So uh, enjoy. Right, so here we are. Um, this was fun. I, if it had come out as easy as this one, I would have uh, filmed it, but it was an absolute ball ache, so I didn't. Um, I've damaged this thread slightly here. To, you know, it's. I put the nut on the top. You know, a good few decent threads. Um, you know, appropriate size socket to fit over the nut to try and drive this out. Um, but unfortunately, because it was so badly corroded and stuff, it just really stuck in there. And so the force I had to put down on that to actually get it to move, unfortunately, has moved the nut on here and damaged the thread a little bit. I think I might just get away with it. Um, it's good enough to at least carry on trying and, and hope for the best anyway, but it's out. Um, so that apparently is the worst part over, apparently. Um, so basically we need this tube, need this bearing and work this bearing out off of there. Like that. 
shoot that in one lot. And go to the side. And we get our R1 yoke. This drops in. I can't even see if I'm doing this. I'm going to reposition you. One sec. There we go. That's a bit better. Alright. So, R1 yoke, R6 tube. Fits in there really easy. Um, obviously, not too easy. Otherwise, it wouldn't be just a straight swap over. And what we're going to do, that went so easy. I'm just going to rest this in the vice nice and flat and give it a few like little light taps and to be honest I think it'll go in so yeah straight in I have got I've noticed let me find the other one I have got like a little well quite a large sort of circlip that pops on which uh, sits into like a little step in the end here and with the corrosion and the years of shit and stuff i think that's what makes it so difficult to get out but um that's gone in fairly easy like i say the one in this yoke just sort of you know just easily pressed out anyway um no force at all pretty much that does move on there i don't like that maybe once it's all tight together I don't know, we shall see. We shall see. It's something to keep an eye on. So, next thing, bearings. Put back on exactly the same way. We use the R6 bearings, so we've got the R6 races. Just drop. See, that pops back out, that's it. And that clip has gone into the groove just quite easily popped out which is a little bit worrying but give it a go. What I need is a socket. There's the back end of the socket just stand it on there so that can't drop anywhere. I don't like that. I might have to look into into that. One bearing. Now, this might end up being a bit difficult, but what I've got to do is uh, one chisel and a punch, flat punch, and try and knock that down, work it down. Basically, what I'm going to do is with the right size hammer start slowly tapping around 
nice and evenly. Gently goes, making sure it's going on straight. Ideally you'd want a big tube to come over this whole thing and yeah, so you can tap it down evenly, but I don't have such luxury. So we will make do. And one way or another, we'll get that on there, but rather than saving you, uh, I'm going to save you the um, trouble of having to watch that. So I will continue with that, and uh, we'll see you at the next stage. Here we go. That, now that I've actually um, driven this bearing on, um, it's solid. It's all locked together and lovely. Uh, what I actually did, it went on fairly easy. What I did is I just put it in the edge of the vice like this. And with my three pound of Billy, couple of swoops, and she went down. Even it moved so fast, even the fact I had my finger under here, and this bit sort of like squashed my finger. So it moved faster than I was expecting. So that's all on there. Sweet, lovely. So that's that's that done. The only issue I have with that is that damaged thread, but we should be able to get around that. I've got an aluminium nut that should cut its way on a little bit anyway. Great, yeah. But um, that's that. So on with now basically getting it all put back to the bike. Um, I've got some proper red bearing grease. I pinched off a mate. Give me a sort of little pot of it. Sort of enough to do me headstock. No, it's not jammy dodger filler. It's just red grease. So I'm gonna pack up that bearing with some grease, the top one with some grease, refit to the bike, and then we'll start to um, build up and go from there. I, however, right now, I'm going to pause and go grab a coffee. That's what I'm gonna do, see you in a bit. Hello again, look at her now. This has gone all quite well actually, to be honest. Um, I've probably cursed it now, but uh, it's been pretty straightforward. Literally, as soon as that headstock was in, it was a bolt-in, bolt-on process. Um, yeah, pretty easy. Standard fork fitment, <clears throat> just like you were fitting them to a R1, basically. Um, my top nut survived, and uh, it was a little bit of a work on. Uh, not too bad, but you know, it didn't easily thread on by hand. Um, but it's on straight and it's on tight, so that's all good. My wheel looks quite good. Uh, so yeah, um, it's just a case of rebuilding and putting back together now. I have my fancy bits, my grips, uh, stuff like that to put on. Still got my rim tape for the other other side. Um, next part of the video you'll see it all fully back together I uh, don't know if I'll do that tonight um, I'll do the video at least but um, that, that's, that's basically it I've just got my calipers to go um, which are exactly the same as my old ones um, so do that do the front brake you know bleed that out um, and that's about it really so uh, we're pretty we're pretty good to go so so yeah um, uh, R1 fork conversion so next step CC complete hi guys right we're at a stage now where we're starting to look like a bike again it's been pretty much um, bolt on straight after this um, that's it uh, you know it's as if you was fitting it to an actual R1 so you know the wheel looks quite good um, it's all been fairly simple process I mean the top nut survived um, so yeah it's been quite an enjoyable uh, time so the next part of this you'll see is um, it back together and complete because literally all I've got to do is bolt my brakes on which is exactly the same mud guard um, you know bleed the brakes all the boring stuff so um, it's been a really simple conversion um, I will be doing a 
a, a, a test ride and and sort of it's more like my opinion of whether it feels better or the same or or whatever um and that's it um so just got a few other little bits to put on you know the little 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 pretty bits so i've got my bar ends and grips and you know the plastics and stuff to go um fork is totally shot uh you know which one it is yes this one as you can see you know it's it's gross so you know that's had it um it looks like it's had it for quite a while as well so glad i've got that sorted now at least so it's just a case of putting it back together and um happy days hopefully so um see you in the next bit Hi right guys, right, yeah, you know, I said I'd uh, be complete in the next uh, section, but we're nearly there. Um, basically, what I've decided to do, um, because there was a couple of little bits and pieces I need to get round, um, you know, in there, as it were, um, I thought oh, I'd best show you, because at the end of the day, this is a conversion video after all. Um, I have, I've sorted one of the little problems, I uh, still haven't, I still yet to do the other one, but I'm going to do that on video. Um, basically, I'm just going to give you a little run around, explain exactly what I've done, um, and and how it all went. Uh, I've got me nice, pretty carbon effect thingy, and I actually got a shotgun end to fit in that hole, which I didn't like the hole being there anyway, as it was. Um, that fits in there perfectly, so that's quite nice. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, so basically what the problems we've got at the moment is the lock to lock. Um, when going all the way to the left, it's absolutely fine. We hit the stop. Uh, if we can see it, the tripod's getting in the way. Oh, sorry about that. I actually stopped the video by accident. Um, right, that little stop in there, obviously, as you can see, um, you know, it hits perfectly on that side. On this side, however, um, we graunch up and stop before we actually get to it. As we can see, it's quite difficult to actually get the camera to see these little bits and pieces. Um, but that stop in there uh, is just about not touching the other side. You can just see it. And what the problem actually is, on this bike in particular, I found, is just the little clutch bracket. Uh, the clutch bracket here um, it's just touching on the fork so what I've done is I've already cable tied the clutch uh, cable to uh, this hose here and also the air box um, so it should be good enough and I'm just going to pop the radiator off to then remove this bracket I thought about just cutting it off but then you know it's it's not a proper way to do it. I'll just remove the whole bracket and that's, and then, then we should have a full lock. Um, yeah, so that's it. Basically, in the next section of the video, it's gonna be complete. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of, you know, putting together on, on camera, just so I'll give you some sort of content. Um, and then, once it's together, I'm gonna sit and explain exactly what parts you need for minimum, what I need to do here and there, um, and and we'll go from there. So, so we'll do that. So, back on. Thanks, Brian. So what I'm gonna do is I've got to remove this bracket in there, and it's actually the radiator goes over it. So, I'm just gonna quickly remove the mounting points for the radiator. One ten mil there. One there. Pull that off of there. Like that. Yeah. 
Phillips head screwdriver. And that, and that's that, that bracket removed. Nice and easy. done there is I just paused here and I've just got a hacksaw and I've just cut through that so I should be able to get the bender out of the way now and uh, get off the cable and then we should have full lock to each stop nice and free and let's try that out Very positive. Just a bit dunk. So yeah, it's just off of it. I wonder what. Ah, it's the actual clutch cable itself. sit down there so the cable is actually where it's looped over this loom here I just, so I just need to undo the cable Pop this back on now. It should all be good. Pretty much. Hopefully, anyway. 
Wait a minute. So what we've got to do left now, what we've got left to do now, other than the fairings front end, is we've got to bleed out the brakes. I'm not even sure if I've got enough brake fluid. Uh, so I don't even know if I'll be able to do that tonight. No, I haven't. Nowhere near enough. So we'll bleed out the brakes. Put the front all back together. Uh, in fact, we shall stop the front end on now and uh, see what she looks like. But an R6 with an R1 front end conversion is what she'll look like, but you know what I mean. She's on. One screw. Mirror time. Hold that front end on a bit better. Now I did say earlier in the video that these are uh, five SL mirrors, and they're not. They're uh, five MT mirrors, but uh, my mistake. Um, but they're not very good anyway. Uh, they're like a copy aftermarket one, and uh, they're forty quid on eBay. I just bought them because I, when the bike fell over doing the um, <coughs> link bearing for the MOT. I smashed the mirror and twisted the foot peg. I mean, the foot peg's not so twisted, it just looks a little bit odd compared to the other one. Um, but I broke my mirrors, so uh, I didn't have a lot of money to spend, seeing as that month the bike had cost me so much money anyway. So, um, yeah, I needed them. I know they're not an MOT requirement, uh, but I don't like 
Well, I like being able to see behind me. I like being able to see behind me quite clearly too. Um, and I did fit just for the MOT some aftermarket dodgy looking weird eBay universal things. Um, and not only did they look terrible, they performed performed terribly as well. I could hardly see anything behind me. And um, not a lot of adjustability on them either. So I just had to get you know, some other ones straight away. And seeing as this is mainly sort of 5MT now with its rear end and all that, I um I thought well, I'd just get the 5MT mirrors as well. And because I could buy a pair of these rather cheap, brand new, whereas all the 5EB ones on eBay were all second hand and they was all knackered in one way or another and more money than I want to pay for a knackered pair of mirrors. Uh, I'm trying to make this bike look as clean as possible and uh, it's it's only the bodywork now that lets that down and we will get round to um, sorting that out very soon but one thing leads to another the next process on this um, I want a quick shifter a heel tech quick shifter um, or how tech or whatever you want to call it. Um, and my friend's got one and I really like it. And I've just got to have one. I was going to do this, do that this month until a fork seal decided to blow. So it's been put on the uh, put on the shelf for later. I haven't even bought it yet, but you know what I mean. That's going to be the next one. Maybe a video on that. Also out on the road. I've now got a another helmet camera as well, so once I get that all sorted out and set up, um, we'll do some footage of being out on the road as well. Try and improve the uh, content somewhat. Um, I've watched all the sections of this current video back already and yeah, I'm not happy with it, I, could, I know I can do a lot better, um, but things will improve, I just feel quite uncomfortable at the moment talking, you know, as soon as you hit that record button, it feels like you're um, talking to a million people. Now I've just noticed because of what I'm doing here and I'm not looking at the actual camera, I've just noticed the camera is pointing at the bottom of the bike. So you guys have been sat there watching at quite a low angle. So I apologise about that. No point in moving it now because I'm done. Sweet. So we've got a bit of wiring to do, just plug the lights in, uh, put the fairing back on the bottom, um, and that's pretty much it. Bleed the brake, but I can't do that because I've got no brake fluid. I'll have to get something from work tomorrow. Um, yeah, and then we'll be out on the road, which is looking good. I've got to uh, put the other grip on. Um, and my far ends and weights that I've got are some sort of Honda thing. Uh, the, the first ones I could find on eBay that actually have an M10 thread, sorry, M6 thread. So um, that's obviously nowhere near good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off of there so it's flat and I'm going to try and step it in if I can so it does butt up nicely to there got to do the same on the other side 
a um, little bit of fabrication work there to do. Um, and that should be about it. Uh, and then we'll be out on the road, letting you know how it goes, how it feels, whether it's any different. So basically, what I'm going to do is conclude this now. this now so I want fork conversion extremely simple to do I've found um, the minimums you need for this are obviously the forks top and bottom yokes um, the clip-ons all your controls and levers everything still fit straight onto those it's not a problem um, your ignition barrel bolts straight onto the yoke just as should be. Um, the little bit of plastic guard, trim guard under here, um, that's different. Um, and there might be some sort of bracket because I've got two bolt holes um, that I haven't used. Well, one I've used for the horn, but you know you can tell there's some sort of bracket there and the brackets that actually hold or guide the uh, brake cables, uh, brake hoses, um, for the R6, that one doesn't actually fit, so I've left that off, but the brake hoses go through this actual hole in the bottom here, uh, and they, they sit quite nicely, you know, no chafage, no no real movement, um, or you know excessive movement where they are going to chafe on things. I think I might do something with them, uh, where I might, you know, tie, tie them off or, or something like that, yeah, but they look all right. Um, you need the the front fender, mud guard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the brakes are the same. The brakes are the same as the R6. The discs are the same. Wheels are the same. So you don't need any of that. Um, so your very basics are even the axle looks the same. And don't quote me on that. Um, but to be honest, it does look exactly the same. Um, but let's just say, for argument's sake, we've got the axle, the forks, the top and bottom yokes. Um, you need your R6 tube. Um, to be honest, the R6 tube is a hell of a lot more difficult to get out than the uh, R1 one. I did use the press for the R1 one, but it literally made no effort in moving that whatsoever. That one took some beating, the R6 one. Uh, you use your R6 bearings, headstock bearings, um, and it's all just about bolt on ordeal straight after that. Um, so your front wheel fits. It, it's, it's very, very simple, very, very simple and effective modification to do to it. It makes it look a hell of a lot more modern. Um, I'd imagine the handle's better probably feels better. Now if we get one of the shocks here, you can sort of see, I mean, from, from that straight away that it, it's just, it's got to be better in there. It's got to be. That's just, that's disgusting anyway. I'm glad to see it still works a bit because I was worried the amount of oil that was coming out there. I was thinking, oh, I've only got my shock absorber on one side. So at least it's, it was doing something. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will try and improve them as time goes on and improve my very basic editing skills. I can basically just piece videos together. Um, uh, and that's it so you know it's as basic as it gets so there we go r1 fork conversion hi right, guys just before we conclude this video um i just wanted to point out i just uh, thought i'd uh, best share this with you the uh the clip-ons are actually uh too low um if i move over this way it actually hits on here now you know it is it is rideable like that, but you know I don't think it's going to be much 
much good at all. Um, I've also got to reroute my cables because uh, they're not they're not great as well. Also, with the handlebar sitting a little bit lower, um, it's you know causing a bit of aggro over there. But they're still like release and and all that. I done me a uh, bit to me bar ends as well. That that was all fairly simple. I just literally whopped the end off and uh, drilled a sort of 14 mil hole step into it, so it just sat on nice and snug. Um, yeah, we're nice and good. Little tip with these I've always had from uh, my mountain bike days is um, you want to get them on and off easy. Use hairspray, slide a screwdriver, a thin screwdriver up inside them, lift it up slightly, you'll squirt a little bit of hairspray in there, and just quickly work the screwdriver around, and then you can just pull them off easily. You know, and even reuse them, and then with your hairspray again, just a little squirt, you know, a tiny little squirt, shove them on, and they'll be loose for a little while, but just leave them, like leave them overnight or whatever, and that hairspray dries up and it literally sticks the grip solid. I mean, you cannot move that. So, um, just a little tip there for you. Um, my rim tape hasn't taken to the back wheel, I don't know why, but pissed off about it actually. Um, I cleaned the wheel, degreased the wheel, um, but you know it's not even that cold in here, and for some reason it's just not sticking. So to me it looks a bit crap, but you know we've got to readdress the wheels anyway. Um, I have actually got a bolt missing out of this wheel, which I'm not happy about at all. Um, I thought it was just a bolt missing at first, and didn't bother to actually look. It's actually a snapped off bolt in there, and not only is it snapped off, someone's had a go at it before, and sort of drilled down the side of it, and it's terrible mess so i think it's even going to be a case of replacing the wheel i have got that wheel over there which has got a ding in it um so it's only quite a small ding so hopefully with the body repair kit sitting behind it in the red box i should be able to and a bit of heat i should be able to pull the ding out nicely and if i can then it's savable and i'll get that wheel and the rear wheel powder coated um so you know it's all done it's all sweet we've got a decent brake um could be a little bit better but you know it's been completely drained of its so i'm just going to run it for a little while and then you know re-bleed it uh we do need to replace these cliff ones as quick as possible um i managed to get hold of a set and not quite paid for all the way yet because the amount of money i spent on the bike but yeah i'm spending more money still i've found some carbon inlays of these uh, so I'm going to be buying those and possibly a steering damper too um, so that will be a nice little touch but I need to get them bar risers as well as quickly as possible uh, so this concludes the R1 conversion um, it's pretty simple to do um, so you know going back to what I said before about what you you know the bare minimums you need don't bother with the standard R1 clip-ons you'll need one mil riser, uh, sorry, one inch riser type ones to actually be a bit more comfortable and uh, less restrictive on the bike. So uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna get that done. So uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, content should get better in time. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, cheers, bye-bye.